There's lots of ways to build storyboards, on paper or using storyboard specific software, but I'd like to show you one way using OpenTunes, a free full featured animation software. And that's what we'll look at today. Hello friends, today I'd like to show you one possible way to build a storyboard in OpenTunes. And as always, if you're new here, my name's Darren T, and on this channel I release new OpenTunes tutorials, news videos and animations weekly. So subscribe to not miss them and hit that bell to be notified when I release a new video. And if you're interested in animating with OpenTunes, check out the other videos on my channel. So today we're looking at storyboards. And storyboards are a really useful way to organise your ideas for any film, whether live action or animated, but today I'll be mostly considering animated films. And in particular, animating in OpenTunes. It can be handy to storyboard in the same software. So why do storyboards help, especially if there's only you working on the film? Well, they help you to build the actual story, to make sure the character arcs flow through the film and that the story itself makes sense. And by seeing the story visually instead of just in a script or in your head, it helps to put pictures to the story and to sort out any problems before you get into filming. They help organise the shots, i.e. how you'll split your film into different scenes, which may well translate into projects or scenes in your software. When animating, I prefer to have many smaller scenes so I can work on the timeline more efficiently and my renders are much quicker. And then I'll stitch them together in video editing software, much like you would in a live action film. And they help you decide where you need shared assets and where you can economise to share assets. For instance, using the same background or characters in different scenes, which in turn will help you decide if you want to put those shared assets into separate projects and import them into each scene, which will save you time. Finally, you need to be able to edit the storyboards quickly, changing a shared background or inserting a new scene or small insert, and this is where software could be much better than working on paper. And OpenTunes allows you to do this really well. So how can we do this in OpenTunes? Well firstly I've organised one of my rooms into a storyboard room with just the controls I need. So I've got the viewer, the egg sheet, the schematic and the palette and palette editor panels here. And laid out like this they leave quite a large area for drawing but I can still see every column on the egg sheet that I need, every entry in the palette and each column in the schematic. But if I need more room I can always double click on a panel's header like this or press the back quote button while the cursor is hovering over that panel which is the one to the left of the number one on my keyboard and then I can see more of that panel. So let's get the columns set up. Well after experimenting with a few styles the one that works best for me at the minute is this. So first I've got a column for the scene headers and I'll use a tunes raster for that. And this just allows me to write the scene number on screen separate from the actual drawings of the boards. Then I've got a background and foreground column. Again I'll use Toons Raster but you can choose which of the level types works best for you. And you might also choose to have a midground column and maybe a couple of foreground columns, one for each character or different groups of characters in the scene. Then I've got a column for framing and this is just to give me a visual guide of where any dialogue or notes are stored. And this time I've chosen a vector level because I'm going to draw two rectangles on here and I might later want to change their position. And these are just to give me the areas on the screen of where we're going to have the dialogue and any notes. And to make sure the drawing area has the same relative dimensions as the main page, that is a 16x9 view, I'm going to use the ruler markers as a guide. Now across the top of the ruler you'll see 16 separate markers and down the left you'll see 16. So what we'll do is we'll take three markers from the right and three from the bottom and then that means the main drawing area will still have the same relative dimension as the full page when you draw in it later. So let's add two rectangles there we go so we'll have dialogue at the bottom of the screen and any notes at the right hand side of the screen. Finally we'll have two notes columns, one for populating each of those two areas. And to add a notes column you simply right click on the column header and choose new note column. So now we just need to add the new text effects to make these note columns appear on screen. And I discussed this effect last week in full and I've got a link to that in the card above and in the description below. So take a look at that when you get time. 
So let's add two effects. And you simply right click in the effect schematic, choose add effect, go to render and choose the text IWA effect. So we can rename them in the X sheet so we recognize which effect is for which note column. And we'll set each effect up to use the notes column to the left. And then if we change the notes effect first, we tell it to use the note column to the left, which is the nearby note column. I'll leave the rest of the settings for now until we have some notes in there. But what we can do is position where the notes are, and that'll be in the orange box here. And the same for the dialogue. Now let's use them, but before I do, I just want to make one change in the preferences. So if you go to the preferences, under file, and then go to the drawing section, and if you change the auto creation from the disabled to use X sheet as an animation sheet, and then close that window, and that means you can just go ahead and draw the next frame in the X sheet, and it'll create a new drawing. So I'll just undo that. So I'll just go ahead and draw up a few boards. So the story I've chosen to storyboard is The Boy Who Cried Wolf. It's a simple story but covers most of what we need for today's demonstration. And it's about a village where they tend a flock of sheep and they need someone to watch the sheep one day. So they ask for a volunteer and a small boy volunteers. He's accepted and he goes to the field to watch the sheep while the villagers go about their business. And after a while of watching the sheep he gets bored. So for a laugh he decides to shout WOLF! And the villagers all run to help the boy, but find no wolf. So they go away annoyed at the boy. This happens a second time, and they get really annoyed and leave him again. But after they leave, a real wolf appears. And when the boy shouts wolf, the villagers ignore him, thinking he's pretending again, and the boy gets eaten. So a classic tale of don't tell lies. So I'm just drawing a few boards here, just to show the basic principles, with some simple colours for the background, and some badly drawn sheep and stick figures for the villagers. And it's worth me pointing out that to add text to a frame in a note level that doesn't directly follow from the previous frame, you just have to extend the notes frame and then type in the new extended frame and then you can select that frame and move it to where you need it. Which is a bit convoluted, but once you get used to it, it's fine. Okay, so if we take a look at what I've got so far, we start with scene one. So on board number one, we show the village with the villagers, and the notes let us know that we want to slow truck in to zoom in to the village. And on the next board, we're zoomed into the villagers, and the notes let us know that there's a fountain running in the background. Uh, the camera doesn't move, it's just static on the villagers, and somehow we know who the lead villager is. Maybe his clothes are different to the rest, or maybe it's just the fact that he's moving or standing towards the front, and that's something to consider for when we put the animation together. So the villager asks the question, Who'd like to watch our flock tonight? And the little boy replies, I'll do it. But as you can see, the dialogue isn't fully showing. And that's because I've forgotten you can't use a single quote in your text. So we need to edit that. And when we save the scene, that gets updated. The next board is at the top of the hill. And as we see in the notes, we want to take some time to show the boy getting bored. So we'll have a small camera pan, maybe the sheep are moving around, barring a little bit. And after a little while, the boy shouts, Wolf. And the villagers run to the scene to ask where he is. So there's plenty more boards to add, more detail to flesh out. But as I mentioned earlier, this first column is to separate the project into different scenes. And I think I'd like to change scene from being in the village to when we go out to the flock of sheep. So here I'd like to add a note that there's another scene. And the way we do that is we go directly after the previous frame and we'll turn off the preview and then we can just write in here scene two. If I want to give it a name we can do but for now I'm happy with that. So if we select on the frame itself we can then click and drag on this left hand side which is a drag marker down to the right place and then we simply need to click and drag to move these frames down by one but because there's a key inside here we need to hold the control key first before we select 
So hold the control key and then click and drag. And then if we grab one of these markers and bring it down, the key moves with it. And again, we want to click and drag to move these two pieces of dialogue down. And the same for these two pieces. Okay, so now frame number five just shows scene two. Then six is part of the second scene. And here's where you can see the benefit of having a separate scene column that clearly separates the two scenes. So likewise, if you want to insert a new board, say between frames six and seven, from the boy shouting wolf to the villagers arriving, we click and drag over these two boards and we can bring them down. The same for the dialogue boards to adjust them. And in the centre here, I want to go from the boy shouting wolf to showing the villagers hearing him and then they'll come up to the hill. So first we'll take a copy of the background of the village. So select on the drawing, press Ctrl C to copy, go inside frame 7 and Ctrl V to paste. And then we place that one back, there's the village, and then we can draw in the new scene. Okay, so I've inserted another board. So on board six, the boy shouts wolf. Now the villagers hear that, and someone says, what's that, let's go. And then they run up the hill and see the boy. So you can see it's really easy to insert a new board. We also reused background number one. And from this list, you can see there's only two backgrounds to draw. And of course, because drawing number one is exposed in lots of different places, any change we make on drawing number one here, so for instance, if we draw, say, another building at the side, and now wherever else board number one is shown, it'll show the new version of the board. So you can make changes on the fly, and those changes will be updated. So you'd continue to review and update the boards, inserting close-ups, changing the staging and camera angles until you have a more complete set of boards showing your full animation or film. And finally, if you're working with someone else, you'd want to share the boards. So the first thing you'd want to do is to delete any unwanted frames. So now the board for this project goes from frame 1 to frame 8. And there's four main ways I can think of for sharing the project. The first is to share the actual Open Tombs project by zipping the project folder up and emailing that to somebody. But the recipient would have to have Open Tombs on their system, but they don't necessarily need to see each of the individual columns, just the overall board. So the second way is you might want to share a video. And you do that using the output settings and then choosing either MOV, AVI or MP4. And you'd want to export at a slow frame rate so the boards could be viewable but you're still setting the viewing speed, which might not be appropriate. So the third way is you might choose to export the frames as images. And to do that, you choose an image format from the list like BMP, JPEG, PNG, or any of the others you've got in your list like TIFF. And that would give you an image for every frame. So you'd have eight separate images to send. And the final way to share your board, which is my favorite, is to use a sprite sheet. And that's simply another output option. So in the list, choose Sprite Sheet, and then click on Options. So there's four format options, and they all produce a PNG file. The padding options below just put a padding spacing around the drawings, and the scale allows you to reduce the size of the frames in the drawing. So Grid simply lays out each of the frames in a grid format, and the number of columns and rows in the grid changes depending on how many frames you're adding. If you choose Vertical, all of the frames are shown vertically, one above the other, and horizontal, as you can guess, we'll just put the frames side by side going left to right, and finally individual just outputs a separate PNG file for each frame. And rendering also produces a text file in the output folder with details of the option that you've chosen. For instance, here's the text file for the options I chose for output into a grid. So there you go, that's one way to storyboard using OpenTunes. Why not give it a go yourself, and see if you find it helpful. And if you can build a better layout for them, why not tell us about it in the comments below, or share it with the rest of the OpenTunes community using the Discord server linked in the description. And now I'll be back next week with another video. And that's... a guarantee.